Greetings everyone, and welcome to another episode of Compendium Clips. In our last two videos, we considered the basic nature of the Catholic Church, as well as how she is the people of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. In this episode, then, I'd like to continue our reflection on the Church, this time considering what are called the Four Marks, or Characteristics of the Church. I particularly want to focus on the first two. To begin, the term mark of the church indicates an essential property or attribute by which the church and her mission are characterized in every age. The tradition of the church has always recognized four such marks, and so in the Nicene Creed, Christians profess belief in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Now, each of these four marks ultimately have their origin in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one who makes the church one and holy, Catholic and apostolic, and he is the one who calls the church to realize these qualities. And so, on the one hand, these four marks can be fully seen only in the light of faith. And yet human reason can also perceive each of these marks in the history of the church. For example, her unity is illustrated, among other things, in the witness of the early fathers of the church, who express the same faith that the Church teaches today. Her holiness is seen, for example, in her repeated commitment to help the poor in every age. The Church's Catholicity, or universality, is demonstrated in the fact that she has extended to and perdured in so many countries and languages throughout history. And her apostolicity, that is, her continuity with the apostles, is illustrated in the unbroken line of popes, from the time of Peter to today. But now that we've considered the four marks of the church in general, let's start looking at them one by one, beginning with the first two, the church's unity and holiness. The church's unity comes, above all, from the unity of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Indeed, God established the Catholic Church to restore the unity of all peoples in His Son, Jesus Christ, who is Himself the head and founder of the Catholic Church. In describing the unity or oneness of the Church, St. Paul says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. In this passage, St. Paul is highlighting some of the visible as well as invisible bonds of the Church's unity. Ultimately, her visible ties of unity are one profession of faith, one common worship in the sacraments, and one apostolic succession of the popes and bishops. On the other hand, the Church's invisible bond of unity is charity, that is, the love that comes from the Holy Spirit, which St. Paul says binds everything together in perfect harmony. These visible and invisible ties of unity, then, always mark the one Church that Jesus established. Moreover, this one church subsists in, or is fully present in, the Catholic Church, governed by the successor of St. Peter. Now, to say that the church which Jesus established is fully present in the Catholic Church means that, by Christ's gift, she alone has the fullness of the means of salvation and the fullness of truth, since the Lord, who is totally faithful, entrusted to her all the blessings of the new covenant. This does not mean, however, that Christians who are not in full communion with the Catholic Church don't have many elements of sanctification and truth. They indeed do, which is why the Church considers the members of these communities as brothers and sisters in Christ. In fact, it's these elements of sanctification and truth which our Orthodox and Protestant brothers and sisters have, such as faith in Christ, baptism, and the Scriptures, that form the basis of a quest for dialogue, and Christian unity. Indeed, the desire for unity among all Christians is a gift from Christ, and something for which the Holy Spirit calls us to work, through things like continued conversion, prayer, fraternal knowledge of each other, but also common pursuits, theological discussion, and above all, charity. But now let's consider the second mark of the Church, that is, holiness which ultimately is a participation in God's divine life and love. The Church is holy, then, above all, because of her source, that is, God, who is all-holy. Further, 
She is continually renewed in holiness because of Christ, who has given himself to her to sanctify her, and because of the Holy Spirit, who continually gives her the life of charity. This means, consequently, that she is also sanctifying, and indeed, especially through the sacraments, she is the font of sanctification for her children. This is seen most clearly and powerfully in her saints, who serve as models of holiness. Yet holiness is the vocation of all the members of the Church, and the goal or purpose of all of her earthly activity. Nevertheless, the Church on earth is at once holy and imperfect. All of the members of the Church, including her ministers, must acknowledge that they are sinners, always in need of purification and conversion. Indeed, this sinfulness can sometimes be a serious obstacle of faith for people both inside and outside the Church. Yet Jesus himself indicated that this would always be the case in the parable of the weeds among the wheat, the weeds being those whose lives are oriented toward sin, and the wheat those directed toward the kingdom of God. He said, let both grow together until the harvest, which he later explained as the end of the world. Thus holiness, like unity, is both an unfailing mark as well as a continual pursuit of the church. To summarize, then, the Catholic Church is perpetually characterized by four marks or four essential properties. These marks are one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. The Church's oneness or unity is seen in her faith, her sacraments, her succession of popes and bishops, and her charity. The Church's holiness, moreover, is seen in her divine source, in her works of sanctification, in her saints, and in her perpetual call to holiness. In our next compendium clip, we'll consider the last two marks of the Church, that is, how she is Catholic and apostolic. Again, this is Father Heaslip wishing you God's blessings.